You wake up and feel only pain. You're a piece of rock being pummeled by gravitational slingshots of other rocks, then dice. Oh, you see how it is. The baby sun and Jupiter are picking on you little guys in the inner solar system. Even though you just got assaulted into oblivion, at least it allowed you to form within only 10 million years. Much faster than the other planets, except for that extremely tiny planet over there. You couldn't quite hear what he said, as he is so damn small, but it couldn't have been important anyway. Yikes, now he's yelling at you. It's like a chihuahua trying to get your attention. Apparently his name is Mercury and yours is Mars. You don't know who decided that name or how that midget over there even knows about it, but it sounds like an interesting name. You approve, and now you're joined by Earth and Venus who have finished forming also. Finally, some adult company. But before anything else can happen, Jupiter rushes by the inner planets and heads towards the sun. He totally almost took you out, the asshole. But fortunately, this Grand Tag hypothesis allowed you all to settle down. You all celebrate because it seems like Jupiter was at least accidentally good for something. Now that there's a bit more peace around here, you figure out that you've got a lot of what's called Aluminum 26 and Iron 60 from your formation. These special elements don't live very long, but when they do exist, they cause a burst of internal heat that separates your core long before anyone else's. This will allow you to generate magnetic fields in the future, a necessary power-up for a planet of your stature. But for now, Jupiter and Saturn start throwing more rocks at you in the late heavy bombardment period. They claim it's to help get you bigger and stronger, but all it does is give you an inferiority complex. They laugh because you just can't seem to grow. Well, joke's on them because they don't know that you will eventually finish your planetary growth faster than any of them and be the most popular planet in the solar system. That does mean competing with Earth over the next few billion years to form faster than her and of course have way better features, like having better life than any other planet. There's only one problem with that. You're stuck in the worst possible spot in the solar system. Too small to be impressive, too big to be cute like Mercury, and right in the middle of everyone else's lives. You're only just inside the habitable zone as well. And it gets worse. Jupiter's early tantrum migration screwed up your entire formation process and basically prevented you from gaining all the material you needed to become the most popular planet. He scattered planetesimals everywhere like a toddler throwing its toys for no f***ing reason and that means you ended up only being 53% of Earth's size. And you could have been so much more. Your diameter is 6,791 kilometers compared to the Earth's 12,742. That's like being the short kid in class who never hit their growth spurt because the tall kid kept stealing your lunch. This size difference means your gravity is pathetically weak at 38% of Earth's. Something weighed 100 pounds or kilos on Earth that only weigh 38 on you. You'd literally make them feel like they were constantly floating around, like on a trampoline. It's embarrassing, honestly. But you can still have a better magnetic field than Earth, right? So, you start by generating it using your core that formed before anyone else's, and with it your atmosphere will remain in place. While your core is not as magnificent as Earth's liquid solid core because of your size, it should do the job just fine. The only problem is your moons are a bit… lacking. While Earth gets one beautiful romantic moon, you're stuck with two potato shaped rocks that look like they were rejected from the asteroid belt. Probably were. Seriously, these things are so ugly they make actual potatoes look like supermodels. Meet Phobos and Deimos, the most underwhelming moons in the solar system. They were irregular, tiny, and covered in dust like they haven't showered in billions of years. While being so small they can't even pull themselves into proper spherical shapes. Vile. But given they are most likely just captured asteroids, you decided to adopt them anyway, as that's what a popular planet will do. Mr. Beast would be proud of you, like when he made wells in Africa. Luckily, you don't need any of those, because scientists already believe you had surface water. Wait, wait, wait. You wonder if you can actually form life from this and perhaps beat Earth despite your genetic disadvantages. That would be most impressive. But unfortunately, being smaller means you won't be able to hold onto your thick carbon atmosphere properly. See, not only is your magnetic field failing and way weaker than Earth's because your core just cooled down too fast, but during this time, Earth's entire core has become larger than your whole body. And because your core's rotation is already ending only 500 million years of being alive, so too will your atmosphere. The sun simply blows it away. He does the same for Venus, but she makes a fake one to protect her, and while Earth lost her first one, she can simply regrow another. You can't do that. You try and you try, but your core just won't start up again. It was beautifully thick and CO2 rich with possible water vapor. You also had some volcanoes refueling it. The setup was perfect. 
But now the sun has taken everything away from you. But why? Out of the inner planets, you formed first. Mercury gets a pass for being tiny and close to the sun, but your atmosphere is now basically toilet paper in a hurricane. 95% carbon dioxide and thinner than the air on top of Mount Everest. Imagine trying to breathe through a coffee filter while someone's blowing a hairdryer at your face. That's your daily existence. You look at the sun and you tell them you've taken everything from me. You look at your moons and you know what you have to do. This is now the start of your villain arc. All you have left is your name. It might not be much, but at least it is interesting. And you now know your new purpose to match it. You might not be able to become the most popular, the biggest, the fastest, the hottest, but you will become the most interesting planet in the solar system. What looks like billions of years of planetary disappointment after your water drains into your crust and any life if you had it dies is actually going to be the very reason you will be successful. Without the protective shield of the atmosphere, you'll be eating radiation daily. It will forge you. See, you're literally bleeding your remaining atmosphere into the void, but you just don't care. It won't be the worst thing that happens to you. And all of this will build character. From age 600 million to 1 billion years old, you have a volcanic activity peak, especially in the Tharsis region on your surface. You spawn massive volcanoes, including the biggest in the solar system, Olympus Mons. It stands 22 kilometers high, with a base spanning over 600 kilometers wide. That's three times taller than Mount Everest, with a footprint the size of Arizona. Take that, Earth. Humans will later marvel over their pathetic little hill, while you actually have the tallest mountain in the solar system. Due to your static lithosphere and lack of tectonics like Earth, you're able to create this beast, also because of your pathetic gravity not giving, you know, height limitations. In fact, most of why any of this has happened is because of your pathetic gravity. But now you actually will end up getting some water back for the almost next billion years. Valley networks, outflow channels, minerals, maybe even some nice lakes and even rain. This water is called episodic because it can't exist on your surface very long, but it can underneath. How interesting. However, it's at this point you see the Earth with life, Venus being the hottest, Saturn trying to be the most beautiful, and Jupiter, I don't know, he's dreaming about something amazing. You need to step it up. You need to be more interesting with more interesting features. You don't want to be a joke planet like Mercury. First of all, your days are 24 hours, 39 minutes, and 35 seconds compared to Earth's approximately 24 hours. That's right, it's longer. Sure, it's almost identical to Earth's and you even have similar axial tilt at 25 degrees, but you take 1.88 years to orbit the sun, which gives you seasons that last twice as long. Imagine having those beach holidays for twice as long. That surely makes you even more interesting. It must be because humans keep making movies about you and sending rovers and satellites to study you. But then you realize something. Your moons are actively sabotaging your goals. Not only does their absolute piss tiny size mean your tilt varies from 15 degrees to like 50 degrees, which is completely destroying any real climates you could have, but they are also planning to betray you. Phobos, your larger moon, is literally spiraling towards you for a death crash in about 50 million years. Your own moon is trying to kill you. And you adopted him. Thanks to tidal forces, Phobos gets one meter closer every century. It's like having a really slow assassination attempt that you can see coming but can't stop. And the whole time he's just staring at you. Menacingly. The inevitable collision will have him crash into you or break up to form a pathetic debris ring. Nothing like Saturn's, not even like Jupiter's. So is it even possible to become the most interesting planet in the solar system despite these annoying little sh**? Well, no. See, over the last few billion years, you've become geologically dead. The only thing that humans are interested in is digging into your mud. You wanted incredible terraforming sci-fi movies, incredible space battles, but in the end, the most popular movie about you is when some botanist named Matt Damon makes potatoes. The reason? You're 4.5 billion years old and you finally look in the mirror. There is no water here anymore, just redness. Your entire surface is covered in iron oxide dust that makes everything look rusty and abandoned. The reddish orange appearance comes from iron rich minerals reacting with oxygen. Basically rusting like an old car left outside for, I don't know, 200 years which means even your most impressive geological features look like they need tetanus shots. But it only gets worse. Your now dead and thin atmosphere creates insane temperature swings from minus 110 degrees Celsius at your poles to 35 degrees Celsius at your equator. So much for nicer weather. Your soil can't even store solar heat, so you are constantly switching between frozen wasteland and somewhat desert oven. 
not even a good one. And while you have those polar ice caps, which are pretty cool, yours don't just shrink, they completely disappear with your seasons, creating massive dust storms from the temperature differences that cover your entire face in grime. Your thin carbon dioxide atmosphere is boring while Earth gets to enjoy a nice nitrogen oxygen mix. Even Valles Marineras, a feature that should make you impressive to look at, can be considered uninteresting. It stretches 4,000 kilometers across your face and drops 7 kilometers deep in your face. It's 10 times longer than the Grand Canyon and 4 times deeper, but it's just a massive scar across your face that wasn't caused by an epic impact or collision. You just did it to yourself. So, you were born first, ready to have life first, and the future looked so promising. But in the end, your premature death ruined everything. Wait, what's that noise? Humans? They're coming from Venus? They want to terraform you instead of her? Yes, yes, all are welcome! Huh? Oh, fuck.